You know, most buildings don't get photographed or mentioned or, you know, visited as often as this one. And I think that ought to say something about its value as a place. I'm Michael Allen. I'm an architectural and urban historian. First time I saw the Clemens Mansion was through a photograph in a book, a book, a guide to historic sites in St. Louis. And it was certainly a very captivating building to see. Uh, there's just something very special about it. It's sort of a little oasis too, you know, surrounded in the last decade by those new buildings around it. And it's sort of like hidden in plain sight, one of those places that, given what's around it, you know, all eyes should be on it, but I always felt like nobody was really paying attention. Uh, my name is Paul Homan, and I am a preservation architect with Ebersol & Associates. As a preservationist, I got to know the, the history of the, of, of the building and the sites and, and kind of understanding what an important structure this was to St. Louis and how, how much we're basically losing. You know, specifically the masks over each of the windows. Some historians will, will tell you that that's the Roman god Juno, but then others believe that that is actually the death mask of Eliza Melanthe, who was James Clemens' wife, who passed away five years before he had uh, the architect design the house. There, there are those who say that that was kind of a homage to her and so that he would always be reminded of her and always have her presence in his life. Um, given where we are, uh, the best scenario that I could see is to um, salvage as much of the cast iron ornament intact. Ultimately, rebuilding the facade somewhere would be, would be the best outcome that we could ask for. I think all the ironwork is important for American architectural history, for singles architectural history, and should be in a museum or collection where people can interact with it and scholars can examine it, those kinds of castings, uh, on that level of craftsmanship. You know, only a few foundries could have produced that work, and we don't know for sure which one did it, but it's, it's a technological sort of breakthrough in the Iron Age to be able to cast those kinds of pieces. That's all information we're going to want at some point. Um, the priority now needs to be in, in saving the rest of the amazing cast iron ornamentation that is just, you know, it's astounding for a residence to have that type of ornamentation. It's extremely unusual um, and it needs to be saved and preserved and uh, displayed. Hi, I'm Jim Miners, and I'm the curator of the Urban Archaeology Display at the City Museum. We plan to take major elements of the Clemens Mansion and put them on display for the public to see for the first time. The public can touch and see the beautiful scale of this truly masterpiece of a house. In addition, we plan on going in the backyard and finding and digging the privy, which has long buried artifacts which date back to the building of the house. Uh, it seems like even after the buildings are gone, archaeology could find some things about the lives of slaves on that property, about the Catholic uh, presence in St. Louis, um, ethnic history. Um, the grounds must be rich with artifacts. Yeah, I mean, it's kind of remarkable it's still there in a lot of ways, too. You know, I don't think it was built to die. Please help us in our quest to bring this love story back to life.